So students, we know that by 1951, most of the refugees who had to come from West Pakistan came and the matter was taken care of. But what happened in East Pakistan or Bangladesh? But the crisis of East Pakistan or Bangladesh continued for a very long time and there was severe communal violence even after the partition. As a result, the refugees who were arriving, they came till 1971 in case of East Pakistan. There was even a movement called the Bengal Vimochana movement which, supported, which was supported by India which could liberate the country of Bangladesh. The war resulted in arrival of 10 lakh refugees to India. They were helped by the government. So which are all the states who are there in northeast part of India who helped? They were the governments of Tripura, Meghalaya, Assam. They helped all of these people settle and to find a new hope of life for themselves in India. Since most of these refugees were from Bangladesh, they knew Bengali and they could easily settle in Bengal. As a result, there was a huge stress of population on West Bengal. Moreover, during 1960s and 70s, India ha was in its own set of economic crisis. M major famines, famines means there was no food, there was drought everywhere, agricultural crops had failed. It destroyed financial security. But still, India didn't leave its humanitarian grounds. It supported all the refugees who came and it tried its best to give them good facilities. Even the people of Tibet, so there was a conflict between the Tibetans and the Chinese government. So a lot of Buddhists, a lot of Tibetans came and asked for refuge in India. So the people of Tibet had arrived in our country as refugees during the Nehru time. According to the estimate, 1 lakh and 20,000 Tibetan refugees had come to India. In 1960, our very own government, government of Karnataka, sanctioned 3,000 acres of land to Tibetan refugees at a place called Bailkupe. And now it has grown as one of the major Tibetan settlements in India. So in spite of all these problems, India still maintained its rich cultural diversity. Now students, we have dealt with two big problems of communal violence because of partition. We spoke about refugee crisis as well. Now we are going to talk about the problem of formation of the new government. So when independence was declared on August 15, 1947 and interim, interim means temporary, for the sake of it, a temporary government was formed. Lord Mountbatten became the Governor General of India. So who was the Governor General of Independent India? Lord Mountbatten. Jawahar Lal Nehru became the first Prime Minister of India. A very common question asked for one mark students, you should know the name. On January 26th, 1950, the Indian Constitution was adopted. That's why this day is celebrated as the Republic Day. Dr. Babu Rajendra Prasad became the first president of India. Students, you should not get confused between the day we got independence and the day we became republic. Republic means the constitution was adopted. Independence means we got freedom from British rule. Don't get confused. The constitution, what does our constitution declare? What was there in the constitution? Let's know a little detail about our constitution. You may be asked to write a short note as well of two marks on our constitution. So the constitution declared India as a sovereign democratic republic. What is the meaning of sovereign? Sovereign means India makes all its decisions by itself. If India wants to declare war on some country, it wants to occupy someone, it wants to make any decisions, it has no boss on top, it makes its own independent decisions. So that is the meaning of sovereignty. Democracy is where we have a government of the people, by the people and for the people. There are elections, everything is fair. That's a democracy. A republic, a republic is a country where the president 
is not a king. A president is elected and a president changes. It's not like there's a king and then the king's child and like that. There's no monarchy. Later through the 42nd amendment, amendment means change to the constitution. Words like secular and socialist. What is the meaning of secular? Where the country has no religion of its own. All religions are equally respected. And one has complete freedom to follow whatever religion they believe in. Socialist. What is the meaning of socialist? Socialist ensure social equality. There will be no discrimination on the grounds of race, religion, caste, etc. So they were added in the year 1976. Students, a very important question from examination point of view. When was the 42nd amendment passed in 1976? What were the words added? Secular and socialist. Okay, now let's move on. The government of India followed an independent foreign policy. What is the meaning of independent foreign policy? So when India got freedom, that was a time when the Second World War had also ended. So there were two main power blocks. There was the USA and there was the USSR or Russia. And every country that became independent was choosing one power block or one side to support. But India chose to remain independent, have its own foreign policy, maintain good relations with all countries of the world and India adopted parliamentary type of democracy. What is the meaning of parliamentary type of democracy? Where we have a parliament, a Lok Sabha, a Raj Sabha, where there is sessions where they sit, where they vote on matters, where they discuss matters before making it into a law. So parliamentary democracy, the constitution drafting committee studied various constitutions of the world and then it came to the conclusion that the parliament elected by the people, it should be the ultimate authority in the government. What is the opposite of parliamentary democracy? It is what's there in United States of America, presidential democracy, where the president, the ultimate power lies in the president. But for us, the ultimate power lies in the Lok Sabha that is elected by the people through direct elections. Now students we will go and look at the next problem, the problem of integration of princely states. Who? Who was given this task? Our very own Iron Man of India, Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel. Let us look at how he did this. So there were 562 princely state students. We already discussed that when British left India. Apart from partitioning India, they had get three options. So these princely states had three options. What were the three options, students? They can join India, they can join Pakistan, or they can remain independent. Imagine students, if they remained independent, so many more small countries would have been born. It would have led to so many problems again. So that was not a very good idea. So in this background, the government of India made a document. The document was called Instrument of Ascension. Means all the princely states can come and become a part of the federal structure of India by signing this document. So this instrument of ascension, students, very important for one mark. What is the name of the instrument? It's the instrument of ascension. Learn the spelling also per perfectly. A double C E double S I O N double C double S. It offered an opportunity for the princely states to join the federal structure of India. What did India give in return if they provided? Okay, let's say there was the Mysore state. It said, okay, I'm going to be a part of India. What would they get in return from the Indian country? Let's look at it. They said revenue sharing based on the actual revenue of the state in the form of royalty. They said that whatever revenue is generated, we will still give that to you. We'll share it with you in the form of royalty. Some special status was also accorded to the ruling kings. Later in 1971, these royalties and statuses were withdrawn. During the integration of India, the Indian princely states, strong opposition came from a few places. Now we will look at them. Junagar, Jammu and Kashmir and Hyderabad. So there was Junagar, 
Jammu and Kashmir and Hyderabad. So under the leadership of Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel who is known as the Iron Man of India, the integration of princely states took place very successfully. Now we will go and look at each of these problematic areas one by one. What were the steps taken to solve it? First let's look at Junagar. So Junagar is close to Rajasthan. The Nawab of this princely state had signed the agreement to join Pakistan. But the citizens wanted to be a part of India. So they revolted against the Nawab on streets. The king ran away from the kingdom. He fled the kingdom. The Diwan, the Diwan is the prime minister you can say of Janagar. He requested the Indian government for military support to maintain law and order. And then they joined the Indian Federation in 1949. So let's quickly recap. So the Nawab said he would be joining, Junagadh would be joining Pakistan. But the people wanted to be a part of India. So they revolted and the Diwan requested Indian government for military help for maintaining law and order. And as a part of this, it joined the Indian Federation in 1949. Now let's look at the problem we faced with Hyderabad. The princely state was ruled by a Nizam. He wanted to remain independent. He didn't want to join India. He didn't want to join Pakistan. He wanted to remain independent. Meanwhile, under the leadership of communists, the farmers of the state revolted against the Nizam. Again here, the people, they revolted against the Nizam and the Zamindars. The people were angry with the army called Razaks, which had the patronage of the Nizam. So the Nizam had this army called Razaks and people were very angry with this army of the Nizam. The government of India sent military to fight Hyderabad and defeated the Nizam and Hyderabad became a part of India in 1948. Vallabhbhai Patel could find a solution to this only because of his firm decision of uniting them with India. Now let's look at Jammu and Kashmir. The king of Jammu and Kashmir, Raja Hari Singh, he decided to remain independent. He feared that Kashmir may join the Indian Federation, Pakistan may instigate the tribal Muslims to invade Kashmir. So he was afraid if Kashmir joins India, then there are a lot of tribal Muslims who are in Kashmir and, the, and Pakistan may encourage them to fight or create a warlike situation. So they decided to stay independent. So students, majority of Kashmir was filled with tribal people. So unless the king had agreed to join India, Indian government could not send its military in case the king, Raja Hari Singh, faced any opposition from tribal people. So finally after some time, the king realized the severity of the problem in hand and he agreed to join India in October 1947. Then the Indian army attacked the tribal soldiers and it drove them out of the Kashmir Valley. At this juncture, this issue was reported to the United Nations organization. One part of Kashmir remained with Pakistan. India complained at UNO to, about this issue. UNO issued battle truce on, so battle truce means peace. They'll maintain peace, they won't fight anymore on January 1st, 1949. The northeast part of Kashmir, also called the Pakistan occupied Kashmir, remained with Pakistan. The ascension of Jammu and Kashmir is very different students from all other ascensions. Like if you saw Hyderabad, we saw Janagar, it became whole and soul a part of India. But with Kashmir, it was a little different from the other ascensions. Now let's look at Pondicherry. Pondicherry was under the which rule? Under the French rule. Even after the independence, the French had continued their hold over Pondicherry, Karaikal, Mahi, Chandranagar. Many political parties like Congress, Communists and others wanted them to become a part of India. So here we have Mahi, Karaikal, Pondicherry and it was under the rule of the French. As a result of these parts got integrated to India in the year 1954 and Pondicherry became a union territory in 1963. Let's look at Goa. Goa was with the Portuguese. 
So a sustained movement was held to protest against the Portuguese occupation of Goa. There was a protest. Though they were ordered to vacate Goa, the Portuguese brought more army from where? From Africa and Europe and they wanted to have their power in Goa. Satyagrahis, the citizens who were doing Satyagraha, the noble non-violent method that Gandhiji taught us, all over India, they entered Goa and they declared that the Portuguese must exit Goa in 1955 and the Indian military entered Goa and took over its administration. Goa had remained a Union territory till 1987 and now Goa is a state. Now let's look at reorganization of states on the basis of language. So when India got independence, um, we didn't have a separate Karnataka where there were Kannada speaking people or Tamil Nadu where there were Tamil speaking. So the organization of states was very different. Later this concept came that we must reorganize states on the basis of language. So the language based formation of state was a demand present during British India also. After independence, this demand became very, very severe. Both the British government and the regional governments never ruled using the social local language. In this background, you know, language-based state reorganization was needed so that they could rule in their own language. After the death of Poti Shri Ramalu, who died after 54 days of hunger strike, his main demand was regional reorganization of states. His demand was for Vishal Andhra. The demand for language based state went up because he died after a 54 day of hunger strike. As a result, Andhra Pradesh was the first state based on language formed in the year 1953 and in 1953 reorganization of state commission was formed and they told them go do a research, come with recommendations on how states can be reorganized. Mr. Fazal Ali became the president of this commission. K.M. Panikar and H.N. Kunjuru became its members. Based on the report of that this commission gave after doing its research, State Reorganization Act was brought into effect. According to this act, 14 states and 6 union territories were formed. Kannada speaking regions were part of a princely state before. Now, on October 14, 1947, Mysore state came into existence. The demand to integrate all these people was also prevalent. They all formed all Karnataka Rajya Nirmana Parishad and demanded for the major integration of Kannada speaking people. Finally, in 1956, Vishala Mysore state came into existence, our very own Karnataka. In 1973, it was renamed as Karnataka. Now there are 29 states and 7 union territories in India, including New Delhi. Now let's do the backside question answers on page 34. Question 1 The British government's last governor general was Lord Mountbatten. India's first home minister was Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Question 3 India's first president was Dr. Babu Rajendra Prasad. Next question, Pondicherry became a union territory in the year, come on students, very good, it's the year 1963. State reorganization law was implemented in dash year, 1953. Next, what were the problems faced in independent India? Number one, the problems faced by Indian, independent India was, Problem of refugees, problem of communal riots, formation of the new government, integration of various provinces, linguistic. Linguistic means language based formation of states and production of food and many others. How did the nation face the refugee problem? In 1951, most of the refugees from West Pakistan were taken care of. After the liberation of Bangladesh, 10 lakh people arrived in India as refugees. Our governments provided them to resettle in the states of Tripura, Meghalaya and Assam. Many Bangladeshi refugees came to Bengal. India did not leave its humanitarian concern and tried its best to provide them with adequate 
facilities. More than 1,20,000 Tibetan refugees came to India in the year 1960 and Karnataka government gave them 3,000 acres of land in Bailkope for them to settle. How was Pondicherry liberated from the French? Explain. So after independence, the French had treated Pondicherry as their colony. The Congress, the Communists and other organizations urged that Pondicherry should be a part of India. So after a long effort, Pondicherry was liberated from the French and it was declared as a Union territory in the year 1963. How was Goa liberated from the Portuguese? So even after independence, Goa was under the rule of the Portuguese. Though the Portuguese were ordered to give up Goa, the Portuguese strengthened their hold by suppressing such movements. In 1955, Satyagrahis from different parts of India gathered at Goa and they staged dharnas. And this movement led to liberation of Goa and it became a union territory of India. And now it has become a state, an independent state of its own in India. Explain the process of state reorganization based on language. So after India achieved independence, it had to face the linguistic formation problem. Many organizations and the people demanded to mark boundaries based on languages of that area. So the government formed a commission under justice called the Fazal Ali Commission in which Fazal Ali was the chairman, K.M. Panikar and H.N. Kunzru were the members. Andhra Pradesh became the first state on the basis of language because of the hunger strike of Sri Ramalu. As per the report of the commission, the State Reorganization Act came into force in 1956. Accordingly, 14 states and 6 union territories were formed in the country. On November 1st, 1956, Mysore state came into existence on the base of Kannada speaking areas. In 1973, Mysore was renamed as the Karnataka state. So students, this brings us to the end of the chapter, post-independent India. There were six main problems. We went into the depth of understanding these problems. We understood how the Indian government solved these problems. Students, I hope you all will work really hard for your exams, practice a lot of questions in writing. You will have to write, write a lot and become perfect. Okay, students, thank you.